Hello out there guys, happy Friday, I hope you're having a fantastic day. And today I want to discuss how Nintendo really might be in the prime position going into the reveal of the Nintendo Switch 2 to actually succeed in the next generation where Microsoft and Sony have maybe struggled a little bit. As you can imagine, this conversation is really based on the fact that we know the Switch 2 is going to be revealed sometime in our semi-near future. They've given us a time frame of before March 2025, so I have been very much leaning on 2024 still being the time to reveal the Switch 2. I know not everyone agrees, and that's fine because I certainly could be wrong. That Again, they've given us that window up to March of 2025, but for some reason, it just still feels like in 2024 before the year is over, it just feels like the right time for them to finally pull the veil back on this thing and let us know it's coming. We already have an idea of some fairly high profile games that are going to be releasing before the end of the year, even over the holiday. And I don't think that revealing the Switch 2 before the end of 2024 is going to impact people's decisions to buy a game like the new Mario & Luigi game. I just feel like people are still going to buy that because we already have Switches anyway, and if that's a game you're interested in, you're going to buy it. Whether or not you've already seen the Switch 2 and you already know it's coming out next year because Nintendo has told us, why would that prevent you from buying that game or any other big game this year that you would want for your current Switch? I don't think that will happen. Of course, though, I want to bring this back to the Microsoft and Sony comparison because it is kind of an important part of this conversation. And it has to be noted, and if you follow me on Twitter or even just my YouTube channel for years, you would already know this about me. Um, I am a fan of all the manufacturers and all of the consoles. I have a Nintendo Switch, of course. I have a PlayStation 5, and I have an Xbox Series X, and I play on them all. In fact, right now, I would probably say going back around a year, I mean, actually, yeah, I would probably say up until... Uh, you know, going back to when Tears of the Kingdom came out. After finishing Tears of the Kingdom last year, I would say that the PlayStation 5 is hands down my most played console. I am a big fan of the PlayStation 5. I love the Xbox Series X as a machine. I think it's a great machine, and Starfield has been one of my favorite games of the past many years. I know it's divisive, and a lot of people don't like it, and I even understand why. I personally loved that game, and I've put in like 100 hours into it. But Microsoft and the Xbox Series X has clearly been struggling with, with strong titles and software. I do not subscribe to Game Pass because I don't play enough of those games to warrant spending like $200 a year for that service. I just buy the one or two games I want every year and it's, and it's better for me. So the point is, I still love all three consoles and I play my PS5 like crazy and I'm also enjoying my Series X and my Switch. But I think that it's a pretty known conversation that the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X, as much as they've sold pretty well, and there has been a lot of killer games released on them overall, they haven't really made the same impact with their next generation that I think a lot of people were hoping they would. And we can't forget that Sony and Microsoft beat Nintendo to this kind of current generation slash next generation era by several years, because these consoles released in 2020 and the Switch 2 is probably going to be releasing next year in 2025, so five years after those consoles. It's pretty crazy when you think about it, especially when you realize that overall, this current generation from Sony and Microsoft really hasn't felt the strongest. And so that's why when we bring the conversation back to Nintendo and the upcoming Switch 2, and I feel comfortable calling it the upcoming Switch 2 because Nintendo has already confirmed to us, like I said in the beginning of this video, that they're going to reveal it sometime soon, within the next like eight or nine months or whatever that is. Um, we know the Switch 2 is coming. That's going to be their kind of next generational leap that is going to be able to compete, at least on a power level, more in line with the PlayStation 5 and the Series X, whereas the Nintendo Switch, as amazing as it is, really can't do that. But I think what's most exciting about the prospect of the Switch 2 is really what the general thesis statement of this video is all about. And it's the fact that Nintendo being so incredibly strong and well-reliant on their first-party games and, and IPs is I just know they're going to be in such a prime position to just knock their next generation launch and entire next generation with the Switch 2 out of the park when compared to Sony and Microsoft. Now, 
The PlayStation 5, I don't think people give it enough credit. Yes, it hasn't made the same impact that the PS3 and the PS4 did before it, but there has been a lot of strong, exclusive software for the PS5. Maybe not as much first-party developed and Sony-developed properties, yes. But in terms of just overall exclusive games, there's been a hell of a lot of good stuff on the PS5. But... Between the lack of first-party support overall for the PS5, and then the Series X just struggling with exclusive titles pretty much its entire life, um, it's it's been really rough for those two consoles. Nintendo, though, with the Switch 2, I mean, we all know that whatever game or games they choose, we know they're going to have at least one amazing first-party launch title that is going to be that perfect killer app for the Switch 2, I just talked about this on one of my most recent videos. They're going to have a Mario game. It might be Metroid Prime 4. They might be launching with a Mario Kart or something else like a Smash Brothers or whatever else we might be able to think of. Some kind of new surprise Zelda game that we haven't thought of, Ocarina of Time Remake. They're going to have something incredible to launch the Switch 2 with. Whereas the PS5 and Series X really didn't have that. I mean... Microsoft couldn't even have Halo Infinite, their darling, ready to go for launch. They had to delay that until a year after the Series X came out. And as much as I loved Halo Infinite, it really would have been nice to have that at the launch of the console. But Nintendo, I think, showed us the perfect template with the Nintendo Switch's launch. And it's been talked about, you know, ad nauseum. I'm not adding anything new to the conversation when I say this here, but... We all know, you go back and look at 2017, that first launch year of the Nintendo Switch, it was obscene how many killer games came out. Exclusive games and first party games came out for the Switch. I mean, launching with Breath of the Wild alone was massive, even though there was a last generation Wii U version available that sold very well, respective to its console. It launched with a killer app brand new Zelda game. We got a brand new Mario game the same year. We got Xenoblade Chronicles uh, 2. We got ARMS as a new IP. We got that incredible Mario Kart Deluxe port. And we got Splatoon 2. I mean, and the list goes on and on. There's several. I think Fire Emblem Warriors was maybe a, a game in that first year. And so they showed us the template of have one exclusive first party killer app to launch your console with. At least one. And then have a strong trickling out of other first party and exclusive titles to fill out the rest of that launch year. And the Switch 2 might not have that high of a volume of exclusive content in the first year. But I would say if I was to guess the smallest, I don't want to call it a worst case scenario, but like just the lowest volume, the lowest number of really great exclusive first party games to expect in the first year in the Switch 2, just based on my own prediction. I would say bare minimum three or four titles will come out in that first 12 months of the Switch 2. And I think Metroid Prime 4 will be one. I think a new 3D Mario will be one. I think a new IP will be one. And then something else like maybe developed from Monolith, another Xenoblade game, whatever their other new IP is going to be, a new Donkey Kong game, some kind of a huge Zelda port, a new Mario Kart or a Smash Brothers or a new Animal Crossing. I mean, any or all of these are franchises and titles that I could see releasing in the first year of the Switch 2. I know that Nintendo saw such great success with the Switch's launch and they realized this is how we need to launch our next console. It's already very well known that they need to be very smart with the transition from the Switch to the Switch 2. And I think that they're smart enough to look at what happened with Sony and Microsoft. And again, we can't discount the fact that those consoles have still sold well. So it's not like those consoles have failed to perform in terms of sales success and monetary success. But in terms of a strong library that's excited the overall gaming landscape, they really haven't done the best job, especially in the first two years. Things picked up eventually, but they struggled for a while. And so Nintendo was probably smart enough to also look at their competition and say, we want to replicate what we did with the Switch and we want to avoid the pitfalls that Sony and Microsoft made. And so this is all just a very long way for me to double down on the general thought that I'm going for here in this video, which is I think Nintendo is going to be really planning something super special for us for the launch of the Switch 2. Obviously, our follow-up questions become what games will those be? And I literally just like rambled off like six or seven titles that to me all make sense. And I'll double down on what I talked about in my last video. I think the first six months, if I was to give the widest window possible, 
In the first six months, I think we're going to see a Metroid Prime 4 Switch 2 version, and I think we're going to see that new 3D Mario game. One of those two, I think, is going to launch the console. I don't see both of them launching same day and date next to each other. That's a disaster for a lot of reasons. But could they be spaced a few months apart? Absolutely. I think the first six months alone is going to give us two of their biggest and most long-running franchises with Mario and Metroid. Maybe those Zelda, Wind Waker, and Twilight Princess ports finally come to the Switch 2 and they avoid the Switch altogether. I mean... I don't know. Like I said, Animal Crossing and Smash Brothers, I think those are other titles that all make sense. And so, look, man, to wrap this up, as much as I said I love my PS5 and I do enjoy my Xbox Series X, and as much as the PS5 is absolutely my most played console right now, I know that Nintendo realizes what they have to do to make sure the Switch 2 is a, is a success and to make sure they don't have the same issues that Sony and Microsoft did in terms of games for their launch. I mean, I'm not even touching on the fact that I think there's going to be some pretty strong third-party support for the Switch 2 out of the gate as well. I mean, if the Switch 2 comes out next year in 2025, we also know Grand Theft Auto 6 is releasing next year, or at least is planned for next year. I mean, who's to say Grand Theft Auto 6 doesn't also get confirmed to come out on the Switch 2, and if it does come day and date, which as we know was a big problem in the Switch era, for third-party multi-platform games to not release day and date on the Nintendo Switch, if, if a game like Grand Theft Auto 6 can come to Switch 2 day and date, man, what a massive, massive win for Nintendo in the Switch 2 that will be. That will be... I mean, look, I'm not even going to play the Dart game. I am not a Grand Theft Auto fan, but you cannot deny its relevance and its success. So if they can have that game on the Switch 2 on day one, even though I won't be buying it, a hell of a lot of people sure will. And it'll show how seriously Nintendo is taking the Switch 2 and how seriously the rest of the industry is taking the Switch 2. And of course, let alone the fact that we know Call of Duty is probably going to start launching on the Switch 2 starting next year as well. It's crazy when you think about it. I think the stars are aligning for the Switch 2 to do everything right that the PS5 and the Series X initially did wrong when they launched.